if you use them in a way that's authentic to you, that's where your business gets to come alive. And I think that's the power of um, this new age of DIY art marketing. I'm celebrating World Watercolor Month with a new video every day in July. Hi, I'm Angela Fair. Every day this month, I'm posting a video here on YouTube about the watercolor journey. And so today I wanted to talk about uh, art business a little bit and just uh, some of the things that have really impacted my art journey as I've grown as an artist in a very public way. In 2012, I posted my first video on YouTube, <laughs> and um, I'm a little afraid to tell you that because you're going to go search it up and see how how much things have changed over the years and how I've how I've grown as an artist. Um, but I think one thing that has been consistent throughout is that I've always wanted to share right from where I'm at, and uh, because of that, I've been able to teach online, to uh, reach thousands of artists with my emails and uh, courses, teach watercolor workshops all over the world, and work with some amazing watercolor brands. It's just absolutely uh, my dream come true, a dream career for me. And when I think about that, uh, I have to remember as well, or think about the artists who are maybe uh, starting out where I started, uh, feeling unknown, uh, wanting to uh, pursue their art and have an art business, and not really sure what that's going to look like for them or how to make it happen in your with all your limitations. Because if anyone has limitations, well, we all do, first of all. Uh, and I certainly did when I started painting. I live in the north. I live in northern British Columbia. We are hours and hours drive from the nearest major center. And so finding an audience for my art to sell my art was uh, seemed really out of reach. Uh, teaching. Uh, there was really only a handful of people interested in learning watercolor in my community. Uh, with the internet, uh, suddenly that began to change. And that was when my career really um, became a possibility. And uh, yet when I went to post my first course online, I remember thinking, there are so many artists out there who are so much more known than I am, who have built reputations, who are famous, and they're teaching watercolor. How can I even expect for a minute to compete with these people? And um, I realized I couldn't. Uh, I can't compete with these people, but I can. Uh, I could share, perhaps, what I was doing, what I was best at, um, and what I felt like I was doing well. And for me, that was approaching watercolor with a lot of intuition and fluidity. And so I created my first course, Loose and Fluid Watercolor, uh, which was followed by Loose and Fluid Watercolor 2, and then a Loose and Fluid Landscape course, and a floral course, and eventually an online community, um, courses on heart-led mindset. Uh, a lot of what I do, I, I describe as heart-led, uh, where you are letting yourself paint from a place of authenticity and identity and self-discovery, because I think we can't really know ourselves very well until we really get out of our own way and see what emerges. And that's really what painting has been for me. And one of the things, and this is what I really want to talk about today, is email. <laughs> um, let's get technical. Uh, it's kind of a boring topic, and yet it's something I love talking about, is uh, the fact that I have a community of artists that I get to share uh, what I'm learning about watercolor and life uh, with. And uh, I do most of that through my email mailing list. It's a scary thing to build a mailing list, first of all. When I first started uh, having a website, I think that was 2001, I would send my quarterly or monthly email uh, that I had, I hoped it to be quarterly or monthly, and I would send it about once a year. And so I would have um, a year's worth of news to share in that email. How do you break that down? Um, and then how do you pack in a year's worth of motivation for them to buy your art uh, or to promote your art? How do you uh, inspire them in a way that you're going to stick with them for the next 12 months until the next email comes out. Uh, and the answer is you can't really do that. You know, it's uh, an annual email is going to remind people you still exist and that you haven't quit. But it's also not going to really communicate the message that you're dedicated and committed to what you're doing either. 
um, what it's going to look like is that you got a burst of energy <laughs> uh, somewhere in the last 12 months and um, and you're pouring it into this email. And then for all they know, um, that is where your energy ended and you're, you know, you go back to being invisible again for the next 12 months. And uh, at some point I realized that that um, little mailing list, which wasn't very big because, of course, it wasn't a priority. Um, that mailing list really wasn't doing much unless I had a much more consistent habit. And when I decided to make a consistent habit of sending email, boy, did I get consistent. I decided I was going to send emails every single week. Not every month, <laughs> not quarterly, weekly. And um, I was teaching online at this point. I'd started teaching online and I was sending maybe a, more, a few more emails than I had been prior to to that, but uh, it still wasn't even monthly. And um, I think I was basically announcing a new course anytime I would create a, a new online course. And um, so this commitment to posting every week, sending an email every week seemed like kind of a big deal. But I knew that if I sent one every, let's say Friday, it would be my reminder every week that I have to have an email out on Friday. And so uh, I needed that. I needed that weekly reminder that Fridays are when I send an email. And it was fascinating how that little decision, which also felt like a big decision, um, how transformational that was for my business. Uh, rather than needing to pack a year or a month's worth of information into one email, I could send out a bite, uh, just a little chunk of info. Um, I could share one thing that I'd been thinking about or one product that I wanted to promote or one painting that I'd finished. And I knew that I'd have another chance in the next week to say something else. And so it became very relational, um, you know, much like the way my sister and I talk on the phone, at least weekly. Uh, you know, we have a relationship that is um, built on knowledge, knowing each other. Um, we've established uh, a relationship that has a lot of common ground and a background and and things that we know about each other because we've invested the time. And my email mailing list began to feel like that as well. Uh, I got responses from people. And so then I would be um, replying to them. And so there would be little conversations happening within the greater conversation of the subscriber, uh, the email list. And it motivated me as well to grow my list. Uh, you know, I went from having maybe two or 300 people on the list uh, in that first year to just uh, recognizing that this was the very best place for them to know what I was up to. Therefore, let's make it easy for them to sign up. So I had great signups on my website. I made sure to mention it on social media. Um, you know, I had, uh, you can offer incentive products, um, downloads uh, that they can use for information um, and sign up to get this download. You know, little different things that you can use as incentive to get people on the mailing list and um, and then incur and nurture them along, get to know each other or have them get to know me at any rate uh, with that, with those weekly emails. And because I've done that, um, it's it's worked out really well for my business. Um, first of all, I see an immediate response in, um, there's always a little bump in sales when I send an email. Uh, I try to include a, a information, a links to resources that they can use, whether it's um, Amazon affiliate links for products I recommend, or a new course I'm, I'm promoting, or an older course that I'm, I'm reminding people still exists. Uh, I have all of these resources um, that I can share with them and see a little uh, boost in sales each time I send an email. Um, so that helps me have a steady income. And the other thing that happens is when I um, introduce a new product, uh, a new course or an event that I'm hosting or a workshop I'm teaching at, because people have gotten to know me through my consistently showing up in email, they know exactly what they're going to get from me. They um, don't get don't have to be surprised that uh, because they know who I am from my emails. And I think my refund rate is much lower than it would be otherwise. Um, I talk about the same things in person that I do in my emails, um, only we get to do it in a back and forth kind of way. And so that has been really powerful. My mailing list is now over 25,000 people. And um, that's that's plenty big to build a career on. And, uh, you know, some of those people will never 
buy anything. Um, and I don't think that matters so much. <laughs> um, I do have to, you know, it, it costs money to have a big mailing list. Uh, generally, companies that help you manage your email, um, they they charge per head <laughs> per email on your list. Um, so I do go periodically through and clean up people who don't ever engage, um, make sure that they still want to be there. Uh, and sometimes it's a little ego um, flattener because I'll send out an email um, to my mailing list and then I'll look at the statistics about that email and they'll say 50 people unsubscribed and 50 sounds like a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, but you have to be reminded that um, if they've unsubscribed and you're sharing what is most genuine um, and interesting to you, the things that engage you the most, and if they're not connecting to that, they are not your ideal audience. <laughs> So there's no point in being offended. You're going to make room, hopefully, for the people that are your ideal audience. And um, and then often there used to be one of the services I used prior to the one I'm using now, which is ConvertKit. Um, one of the services I used would ask your reasons for why you're leaving. And I ConvertKit might do that as well, but I've turned it off. I don't really care. Um, but so often people would... Um, say, I just get too many emails, <laughs> or it's not personal. Um, I really like you. It's just I'm not doing watercolor anymore or something like that. And so often when people would leave a reason, they were so kind. Their reasons were kind. And so I, I have that little foundation so that I know that it's not they're not hitting unsubscribe because they're just furious with me and they hate me. Um, and I have to re and I remind myself of that because it is always, you know, you don't want anyone to unsubscribe. You want them to love everything you have to say. Um, I'm a big people pleaser. And uh, and yet what has worked the best for me is to um, write as though I'm my own ideal audience. Uh, I talk to myself first. Uh, I share the things that encourage me, uh, the things I need to hear. Uh, when I write an email, I don't always sell. Uh, very often I... I'm just writing to encourage my audience. I think of them as struggling watercolor painters like I am and people who need encouragement to need to be reminded that they're not alone in this, um, need to be reminded to be courageous and that they are the best thing they bring to their art comes from their heart. And, uh, you know, when I can share that, I think that's an amazing privilege and I'm so thankful to be able to do it. And, um, you know, that's what has built relationships uh, with people who, you know, would willingly, um, you know, give me their money <laughs> when I'm teaching a new course, um, when I'm teaching a workshop in a, in a new place. Uh, and, you know, they'll, they'll travel thousands of miles sometimes to paint with me. And uh, that's a privilege as well. I'm so thankful for. And uh, so if you're looking to build community, uh, it's not easy to build an email list. It takes time. Um, but, you know, if you show up looking for um, what you would look for uh, in uh, connection, in human connection, in um, what you have to share, um, you know, speak to uh, your imagined self as your ideal buyer. Uh, that's a really good place to start because you're going to find people who align with your values and uh, they're they want, they want to connect with you on that level. Um, it's a really genuine level. It means a lot. And uh, we get to do that as artists. I think that's pretty wonderful. Uh, if you have, uh, if you're curious about uh, starting a mailing list, uh, what I would encourage you to do is visit convertkit.com. They actually do a pretty fantastic job of teaching people how to use their product. Uh, with a small mailing list, if you're just getting started, um, don't be discouraged. Now is the best time to start if you couldn't start yesterday. <laughs> and um, they'll, they, they have a great, the great beginner rate for someone coming in with basically no, no names on your mailing list. They'll teach you the rules about uh, what, what you can and can't do with email so you don't become a dreaded spammer. And um, it's, it's a great place to begin, but just do never lose sight of who you are as well. Um, one thing that I have really tried to focus on is not, not using any kind of system for promoting products or sending emails. I, I look at relationship first and, uh, you know, we serve and then uh, we trust that uh, we build, I can build a business around that. Um, and it's, it's really worked well for me. 
Uh, I'm really thankful for uh, the amazing services that there are out there for people who are building a business that happens online through email, through websites, through social media, and uh, for that, for the tools that we have at our disposal. Um, if you use them in a way that's authentic to you, that's where your business gets to come alive. And I think that's the power of um, this new age of DIY art marketing. Uh, we get to build a business based around our values rather than trusting a gallery that might not um, have the same priorities and goals as we do. So um, that's my little talk on art business. It's a little bit longer than I planned it to be, but uh, I love talking about marketing because it can be as simple as you seeking to connect with the people who share your values, who love the same things you love, and uh, you can connect over that. And uh, it can, uh, it has worked for me to create a business out of that. Um, it, it's very relational and uh, it's kind of freeing to be able to create a business model that's all about what you find most important. Uh, thanks for watching. I am sharing videos every single day here during July uh, in honor of World Watercolor Month. Uh, come back tomorrow. I will probably be doing some painting and uh, rather than just sitting around gabbing. But uh, do let me know uh, in the comments below if uh, you work with email for your business. Uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to take a look and uh, offer some suggestions if you have some specific questions. If you're enjoying this month of daily videos, do subscribe to my channel. I don't post every day on the regular, but uh, I do love connecting with the watercolor audience. Um, and my email list, since we're talking about email lists, uh, please sign up, oh, visit AngelaFair.com. I've got a free download for you, which offers some resources for watercolor artists uh, when you sign up. So go ahead and do that right now. Uh, click the link below in the description to uh, sign up for my mailing list. And uh, I, like I said, I try to encourage artists every single week. And uh, I'd love for you to be on that list and, and feeling that encouragement too. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with more watercolor advice you can learn from. Don't forget to include the hashtag World Watercolor Month when you participate and post watercolor art in July.